Hi readers, today we are going to read a book with the title Face to Face with Caterpillars. Look carefully at the zoomed in close up photograph that's on the front cover of this book. Thinking about what we see in the photograph and what the title is Face to Face with Caterpillars. What do you think this book is about? What do you think the main topic is? I think we'll learn about caterpillars too. This book was written by Darlene A. Murawski. She's our author. This is a nonfiction book. Nonfiction books have information in them. We read them to learn all about the world. The little bits of information that we learn from these books is called a key detail. It helps us know more about our topic. Face to Face with Caterpillars by Darlene A. Murawski. This is an interesting photograph. Hmm. Let's look carefully at this photograph. I see a lady. She seems to be laying on the floor with a camera and somebody else is holding something over her head that she can take a picture of. If I look very carefully, I see right there, I see a little brown oval. That's this right here. That's the photograph that she was taking, and it's how she took it. This is a caption. It tells us about the photograph that we're looking at. It says, here I am on my way back photographing the caterpillar with, on the facing page. So it's her taking this photograph. This is an Australian butterfly caterpillar eating an ant larva. Its diet consists entirely of young green tree ants and it lives inside the ant nests. I was prying open a green tree ant nest with a brave biologist assistant in Queensland, Australia. The summer heat was unbearable and the ants were biting like crazy, but we persisted. That means they kept trying. We eventually found our prize, a strange, rarely seen caterpillar with a leathery body. It eats, of all things, young ants and lives exclusively in their nests. That means that's the only place that it lives. Hmm. So the Australian butterfly caterpillar only lives in green tree ant nests. That's the only place that they live. It's a special kind of butterfly caterpillar. The caterpillar's thick body seemed to glide like a vacuum cleaner over its prey. We transferred or moved the caterpillar and some ants to a glass plate so that she could photograph them from below. She wanted to see how the caterpillar eats. Later, after many meals, the caterpillar got large and plump. It finally transformed into a beautiful butterfly and then it had to quickly escape the ant nest before the ants could attack and kill it. This was one of many surprising caterpillars that she encountered on her assignment for National Geographic magazine. Each species of caterpillar has its own form, diet, defenses, habitat, and geographic range, so not all caterpillars are the same. There are about 17,000 species of butterflies and 145,000 species of moths. And these are just the ones that have been described worldwide and given a scientific name. Many still await discovery. Searching for caterpillars is like a treasure hunt. The harder they are to find, the more exciting the moment of discovery. You'll find that some caterpillars live in large groups and make tents that they all share. A few eat wax, pollen, or insects. Some spit acid or startle predators with a phony face, a fake face. Others are so well camouflaged, you can look right at them and not see them at all. 
Caterpillars are worth their weight in gold for all that they could teach us. So I'm noticing that this photograph has a number one in the corner and this photograph has a number two. It helps us know which photograph this caption goes with. This caption goes with photograph number one. This caption goes with photograph number two. So a caption tells us more about a photograph. That's a nonfiction text feature. Meet the caterpillar. There's another caption about this photograph. Here's a caption about this photograph. We can learn a lot from a nonfiction textbook just by looking at the pictures and thinking, what is the author trying to tell me with her very carefully chosen photographs? These caterpillars or butterflies are all in different stages of its life. First, it's an egg. And then, it's not. Out hatches the caterpillar, a larva. It eats and gets bigger. It makes a chrysalis around itself and becomes a pupa. And then it turns into a butterfly. So I think what it wanted us to know with all these words is that caterpillars are born one way and they go through many changes and the adult looks very different than the baby. Nonfiction books have diagrams. Here's a wonderful diagram. It's of this particular caterpillar. And we can see all the labels that it gave for us. Nonfiction books have diagrams, a picture with labels to show all the parts. What do you think she wanted us to learn from this photograph? The information that's in this writing, in this part of the text, probably has to do with caterpillars eating leaves. Because I know that authors choose their photographs very carefully to go with their words. This is the bottom of a leaf. It is covered with caterpillars. This picture is up close. The leaf is not really that big. The photographer got very close with her camera and zoomed in so that we could see it with our careful scientist eyes. Nonfiction books have zoomed in photographs to help us really understand what's happening. We know that caterpillars hatch from eggs. The caption here helps us understand that caterpillars often eat their own eggshell after they crawl out. Nonfiction books like to give us some of these text features to help us read about a topic and understand. We've seen captions, a sentence or two that goes with each photograph to help us understand it. We've seen carefully chosen photographs that goes with the text. We've seen zoomed in photographs to show us all the details. We've seen diagrams that label all of the parts of something. It helps us learn a lot about our topic. Thank you for looking at Face to Face with Caterpillars with me.